Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I am uh, at my friend Louisa Hamachek's hearth at her little home here in Eugene, Oregon. And I'm going to read a little bit of our book, uh, Poison Power. But I wanted to share something with you. My friend Ed bought this book. I think I showed it to you last night. It's uh, called The Irreverent Illustrated View of Nuclear Power by John Goffman. And I haven't read it yet, but I was poking through it, and he has a bunch of uh, comics. And this one I have to share with you. Uh, I'll tell you what it says. It says, Outright Nuclear Power. And there's a group of men sitting around the seat there. Can you see that? Not quite yet. There you go. I'll hold still. There. And then I'll read you what the caption says. It's hilarious. It says, "It's from this is from Outright Nuclear Power. They're obviously having a board meeting. It says, first, we have to convince the people that good health isn't everything. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I think that's where they're at already, right? <laughs> no big deal. It's nothing to worry about. So we're going to sit and drink a cup of tea. She's going to listen to me read because I've been... Aunt, and we're visiting for the first time in a long time, and I uh, Good to want to read, so I really need to read. Need The need to read. We need to read Poison Power by Dr. John Goffman and Arthur R. Tamplin, so we can educate ourselves about this. And remember the difference between no dose is not the same as low dose. Low dose, which is acceptable, is not safe. Allows for cancer. Okay, so we are on page 143 uh, on Chapter 5. Chapter 5's title is Promises, Promises, and we're on the second paragraph down. Commissioner Thompson said that the present reaction, said that present reactors do not permit for even one cancer death per year, which implies that the present exposure of the entire population is 0 .005 millirads or less, which is a lie. Uh, yet the director of the Federal Radiation Council, Dr. Paul Tompkins, stated that it would cost billions of dollars to rebuild reactors now in operation to comply with an allowable dosage of 17 millirads per year. Uh, that's for the U.S. responding to radiation warnings by Dr. Roger, Roger Rappaport, San Francisco Chronicle, December 18, 1969. If indeed the current exposure is as low as the AEC claims it is, 3,400 times lower than 17 millirads, we shouldn't need any revision of reactor installations at all, and the cost could be zero. It's obvious that Commissioner Thompson's estimates, which we presume are the official estimates of the AEC, differ from those of Dr. Paul Tompkins by many factors of thousands. How does this happen? And how can the layman with no expertise in these matters have any confidence in such public statements made that what such, let me read that again, I beg your pardon. And how can the layman with no expertise in these matters have, have any confidence in what such public statements may mean when the experts differ so radically? Dr. Victor Bond of the AEC Brookhaven's Laboratory makes even rosier predictions than did Commissioner Thompson. Dr. Bond testified at recent hearings before the Public Service Board of the State of Vermont. His testimony was from a document entitled The Public and, Ra the Public and Radiation from Nuclear Power Plants. That's a weird title. The Public and Radiation from Nuclear Power Plants. Uh, this is the whole thing. This is what it says at the bottom. The Public and Radiation from Nuclear Power Plants. Victor P. Bond, testimony delivered by the Public Service Board of State of Vermont. Hearings at the Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant, September 1970. Hmm. Didn't do any fucking good, did it? That was where I grew up. Next to really? Island, really? Vermont Yankee. Yeah, I was about um, 30 miles from there in Massachusetts. Just o It's just over the border. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's closed down recently, right? Yeah, that's what I heard, which is great yeah. because we were like, it's what got me going. Yeah. They brought us on an American Civ class in high school on a tour of it. 
And I was just thinking about it the other day. Is that when you got started with this? Yeah. Wow, I didn't even know about it. Um, okay, page 144, second paragraph down. Dr. Bond, too, sees, on, sees only the tip of the iceberg. The nuclear reactor itself operating perfectly with no radiation from mechanical failures, no accidents, no carelessness, no judgment, mistaken judgment on the part of the employees. He does not want not he does not once mention the chance for radiation exposure in all other aspects of nuclear power which we have described. Transport transporting fuel rods, processing fuel rods, transporting waste and storing waste. He estimates that nuclear power plants at present expose the American people to an average of point zero 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 one millirad per year. He cal he calculates that for a forty that for a forty fold increase in the nuclear power industry in the future, this exposure might go to point zero zero four millirads per year. Grossly mistaken. What is mistaken? This motherfucker was saying that we're only the exposure rate for having a forty fold increase in nuclear power plants was going to have a public exposure rate of point zero zero four rads per year millirads per year. And you say we're going to have more. We already have more than that. Way more than that. Because they fucking ignored this stupid book. Therefore, Betty Boot, stop. Yeah, Boot. Don't tell that couch off. <laughs> Go tell that couch off. Her dog tells the couch off. Let me get back to reading. Therefore, he reasons that estimates of cancer leukemia risk of genetic hazards based on the currently allowable 170 milligrams are some 42 times too high. 42 times, 42,000 times too high. So he's saying that the current estimates are 42,000 times too high. Such an assumption assu implies that nuclear power plants for electricity generation can proceed to expand as planned fully up to the year 2000 with the exposure limits 42,000 ti 42, times lower than those currently allowed. Such an assumption implies that any radiation exposure from fuel transportation Accidents, sabotage, fuel processing, radi waste radioactivity pro processing, waste radioactivity shipping, and perpetual guardianship of the immense amounts of radioactive waste will be totally neglig negligible in comparison with the 0 .004 millirads predicted as the dose expected for the American people from the nuclear power plants alone. Wow. The tip of the iceberg. At the hearings, Dr. Bond was asked by Attorney Blauston why he opposed lowering the allowable amounts of radiation when he claims there is a 42,000 fold difference between what he, Dr. Bond, believes is required and what is now permitted by the federal statutes. Dr. Bond was unable to answer. So in hearings throughout the country, in speeches before many varied groups, and in testimony before congressional committees, we hear AEC spokesmen and promoters of the nuclear power industry trying to outdo one, uh, one another in their predictions of how low the radiation exposure of the American people will be for all aspects of nuclear power generation, 30,000 to 40 times thousand lower than the levels currently allowed. Yet, the highly competent biologists in this field ask the currently allowable doses of radiation be reduced only tenfold or a hundredfold. Proponents of nuclear electricity refuse to consider this change, even though it would give them a 300 to 3,000 fold margin of safety above what they promise will be the average radiation exposure. One could be very generous in providing leeway for unexpected accidents. We could allow the radio that we could allow the nuclear power industry to develop with a radiation dose allowance, including all hazards in the industry of 
0 0.1 millirad in the population. I think that's where we're at now. This provides a 25-fold margin of safety over what Dr. Bond says is required. This is very generous leeway. If the nuclear power industry were to accept this level, all the arguments would end and the nuclear industry could proceed unhampered. Of course, these arrangements would have to be entered into the Code of Federal Regulations. Present promises and good intentions are not. One cannot place promises and good intentions in the Code of Regulations. Yet, in a matter in, uh -huh. involving irreversible pollution of the human race and the environment, the proper and only place for all agreements in this regard to this matter is the Code of Federal Regulations. Yeah. One must reluctantly conclude that there is a great deal of confusion and lack of responsibility at very high levels in the entire program. The AEC was presented with evidence that all the standards they had proclaimed were safe were truly unsafe. So let me read that sentence again. Mm -hmm. The AEC was presented with evidence that all the standards they proclaimed as safe were truly unsafe. Mm. The atomic energy proponents vigorously denied that harm in the form of cancer, leukemia, and genetic diseases was even possible, and they still do, actually. Representative Chad Holfield, chairman of the Joint Congressional, Co Congressional Committee on Atomic Energy, told us he had been assured that a hundred times as much radiation as the level which is officially allowable would be necessary before the safe level is passed. Chairman Hollyfield's statement rests totally on discredited evidence. The AEC statement that no, that no effects are observed at their presumed safe levels of radiation means only that no one has ever made any adequate observations. Right. Same way they did the Fukushima waste in the water. They, they just didn't look. They're just not looking. Yeah, they said we have not found any of this radiation from Fukushima in the fish. Because we're not looking. And then finally when the Canadians said, but we did. Our curse. They said, well, we didn't look. Right. Any adequate observations. When it became clear that Unproven claims of AEC and Federal Radiation Council were being exposed. The second line of defense was used. The so-called, quote, safe, unquote, standards must be safe because very sincere men had set the standards. <clears throat> These same men now refused to look at the mass of new evidence which proved their standards to be anything but safe. When this strategy of denying the evidence was ineffective, promoters of the nuclear energy program took up a new tactic. Quote, we will never allow anyone to be exposed to the allowable dose, they said. Unquote. But when they were asked for minimal evidence of sincerity in the form of a written regulation in a government code to guarantee the public that the nuclear power industry would not expose us to the maximum level, they refused absolutely. It seemed that the public can only draw one conclusion, that either the AEC, that neither the AEC nor the nuclear power industry believes they can operate at the low doses they promise. So they hope against hope that the public will not require them to make good their claims and will instead accept their promises, promises. And that is the end of Chapter 5, guys. Uh, we will read, pick this up tomorrow or maybe the next night. Uh, the new title is called How Safe Are Nuclear Reactors? Well, we're finding that one out. They're totally not safe. So, um... Please take some action. Do whatever you think is the right thing to do for yourself, but please call your elected officials. I think this is a great advice. We need to demand federal regulation. We need to call our senators and tell them to stop the nuclear power plant near you. And please call, if you're in the Northwest, please call Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley's office and Governor Brown. I guess it's Governor Brown now, right? Mm -hmm. 
and tell them that we want to have uh, them to put pressure on Washington State and the uh, Department of Energy to get uh, those earthquake assessments done. We I found out today that they're not even being planned till 2019. That's outrageous. We can't wait for that. So we need to call the senators and we need to call the governor and we need to call the nuclear industry and tell them we're sitting on earthquake faults that we know might go off and we need these things tested way before then. Mm -hmm. We need to get them done now. Or shut them down and then if they turn out to be okay, turn them on again. Right. Let's work to get them shut down More right away. on the use of them until we know the truth on the seismic. Right. Exactly. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Ciao. Mm -hmm. Let's see, figure out how to stop this thing. Got the laptop sitting here. Uh, and I took off my glasses. So am I on that thing there?